Isn't this incredible? I know this is... I know this is difficult for some people to watch, but this is absolutely amazing. The incredible Inkahumas do it again. Well, it's not all over yet. So I haven't switched the car off in case the buffalo comes in this direction. Now that... Okay. I know that's a terrible sound. But this is Africa, this is nature, this is life! I'm shaking with excitement. So what they're trying to do, you see how they're going for his haunches in the soft spot at the back of his legs when they're trying to get him down on the ground? Once he's on the ground, a lot of the battle has been won. Now you see, the other way they bring down, once that buffalo is on the ground, they're going to try to go for its throat or its nose. Look at that, that lioness has been on top the whole time. She's just not letting go. You can see how she's chewing in there. Every little bit of loss of blood and all that will help bring him down. Just see where he goes. Now you've always got to be careful in these situations that you don't put the vehicle in the wrong place. See, oh, we nearly got that lioness. But do you see what she's doing? She's keeping him distracted while the others work on the back. Look, look, see how she's trying to pull his back leg out to get him on the ground. Oh, she's fallen off. Oh, now he's, all right, she's back on. Isn't that amazing? Look at that agility. Look how she's opened up that wound and that blood, as that blood seeps, it's going to weaken him slowly but surely. Now, I know this is sensitive, guys. Um, if you are not comfortable with this type of stuff, please rather don't watch. This is live and this is nature. He's putting up a proper fight. And you can see how the lions avoid those rapier-like horns of the buffalo. This is a battle that's being played out in the African bush for the last 200,000 or so years that lions and buffalo have coexisted. Look at, look at, she's going for that Achilles tendon. Look, isn't that incredible? She's trying to weaken him, get him down onto the ground.
Oh, in any fall there. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Look at that agility. She fell off and she was back on there in a split second. Now it's gonna be interesting to see which lioness, once they get him down, goes for the throat. Just in case he decides to charge this way, we're gonna move back a bit. Sometimes it can take as long as an hour and a half uh, for them to get a buffalo completely dead. You can still see he's got quite a lot of fight left in him. that you can see how look. you can see how the blood's starting to flow more freely and that will weaken him slowly now remember guys as hard as this is the lions have to eat they've got those eight cubs to feed See how that lioness keeps trying. They keep trying to get to the front. They keep trying to grab him by the. Look at that. Look how he just walks with those lions on top of him. He still hasn't given up yet. Oh dear, my earpiece has come out. Just give me a second. There we go. It's back in. Now Jamie's also arrived. So they're right at the edge of the light there. Okay, I'm just gonna move around. Get on the right side of him. He's walking with all those lines on his back. He's just disappeared behind a termite. Okay, let's go to Jamie. She's got a better view. We've just arrived on the scene, and oh my goodness, what a scene to be greeted with. The Inkahumas on the top of the buffalo, and this is not at all easy for us to watch. It's always incredibly, incredibly difficult. Sorry, yours. Okay, we will in a moment. Sorry, yours. <coughs> thank you. Awesome, thank you. Oh, this is unbelievable. This is so warm to watch something like this. The Inkhorn is proving once again what a phenomenal force they are. A serious force we reckon with. Let's go. It's great. You've got a slightly better view. They nearly got him down there. Um, oh, look at that hook. He nearly got that lioness. Oh, we're going to get out of here. It's 
Jason is still trying to get get onto that front side of him. Look at that. Isn't this just absolutely amazing? Now, a buffalo bull like that can weigh 1,500 pounds. Each lioness probably only weighs around 300 pounds. See, they're going for those Achilles tendons. They're desperately trying to get this buffalo down. Once he's on the ground, it's going to be much easier for them to get in and around that mouth um, safely. Kahumas are incredible buffalo hunters. Sorry, easy. I'd rather a stick than a buffalo. See how he's trying to hook, and that's one of the reasons the lions go for that exact spot when they jump onto the back of the buffalo, just behind the shoulder blades. You see there, it's just out of reach of where he can hook back with his head. And he's almost got his tail completely off. given up. I know this can be very difficult to watch guys but this is the lion's meal. It's, it's the survival for those 18 Kuma cubs. It's a big buffalo bull like this. It's a lot of meat for that family. You can actually hear her crunching in. She's reached the bone, the vertebrae in his back, that lioness on the back. You can actually hear her chewing on the, on the, on the bones. Oh, see that? Those lioness are trying, waiting for a half gap. If they can get onto the nose, it's a very common tactic that lions use on big animals like buffalo. If they can get onto the nose, um, what they do is they bite into that nose, and uh, then what happens is it actually starts to slowly drown on its own blood. Okay, so I know you're still listening to me, but you're looking from Jamie. Isn't this incredible? Look at that. No, I'd say the buffalo's chances of escaping become less and less with every second. There we go, you can hear the boat crunch. Standing by. No, you're, please keep it, it's nice light. Thanks very much. Oh, there, he's nearly down, he's nearly down. He nearly fell down. Oh, there we go. Have they got him? They've got him down. 
Now, who's going to be the brave lioness who goes for the throat or the nose, gets near those horns? Look, there we go. She's got, she's got, oh no, she didn't quite get there. There we go. Look, 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 she's going there. I wonder who that is. She's going for the throat. She's got safely under the horns. Now she's going to go for that nose grip. Now, as we get that nose grip, she, she bursts the, the veins, she digs into the nose, and that buffalo will slowly drown. But it's very, it's still dangerous. Those horns are still there. But when the buffalo's down, the lions have generally, they've won. Now, I know this is difficult, that buffalo is not dead and the other lions are starting to feed already. That is not unusual behavior. I know you're looking at Jamie, I'm just going to try and get around to the other side of the kill. Oh, no, we're going to sit there. We're going to sit there, we're going to look at that. Okay, let's go. What do you think, Sandra? Let's go around to the other side. We're just going to get ourselves in the right spot. How's that, Sander? Cool. There we go. I'm just going to try to get the spotlight in a spot where it doesn't move. The faster they get on to that nose, the quicker this ends. It's nearly over now. Perfect choice. No. You can hear those bellows are changing a little bit. There's almost gurgling in the mouth. And that's because of the blood. Yeah, that's starting to gurgle. You can see actually how strong a lioness is there. She's getting kicked in the face. But that's not stopping her.
is hard to watch Now this is one of the joys of being out after dark. Being able to see the big cat's hunt. Yeah, the blood starting to gurgle out of that buffalo's nose. He's definitely getting much weaker now. And you can see now some of the lioness, or the single lioness at the back, she's resting. Now, it would have taken a massive amount of effort for these lions to bring down. Or could there be a male coming? Now, there were tracks of a male around earlier. a male on the way. Now any self-respecting male lion within 10 kilometers of here would have heard that. And a male lion is not going to pass up a free meal. Or she could go back and fetch the cubs. That could be where she's off to. fighting a way to suffocate that buffalo. Now, of course, there's no standard sort of ranking or hierarchy amongst a lioness and Romy's wondering who gets to jump on, who gets to grab the dangerous end. Is it the same lioness every time or is it, does it vary? Well, Romy, I actually saw three different lionesses on top of this buffalo today and I've seen different lionesses go for that kill grip on buffalo. So I just think whoever happens to be in the right position or maybe the lioness that put the least effort into the actual bringing down of the buffalo. Ah. You can see that lioness is really tired. And she was up on top, probably one of the lionesses that were on top for quite a while. And that takes incredible physical strength to hold on to that bunking, uh, that bucking buffalo. I mean... And I think probably the, the, the lioness sits in the best position and probably the least exerted from the, the rest of the hunt will grab that all-important nose or throat hold. Now, with lionesses, you don't see the, the throat hold as often as the nose hold on big buffalo bulls. As it, they might, their jaws might not be big enough to clamp close the larynx, but male lions will, will, will use that throat hold even on a big buffalo. And 
again, I do, and again, I do apologize to our sensitive viewers. I know this is difficult to watch, um, but this is live, and we are here to observe nature in all its facets. So this is part of nature, a crucial part of nature, and not something people get to see very often. So this is absolutely incredible. We are live with the inc incredible Nkahuma pride. Put down a massive buffalo bull. He's not quite dead yet, but he's getting closer. struggling to breathe more and more so what's happening is his lungs are slowly filling with blood so what actually happens now is he'll actually drown you can see kicking is becoming weaker and weaker She'll only let go once he's dead. So those claws are fully extended, gripped into that neck, and she's got a vice-like clamp with her jaws around his nostrils. Again, not for sensitive viewers, but one must remember this is the future of the Inkahuma cubs. The fact that their mothers are able to hunt so successfully and hunt big prey successfully. As you can see, the others are starting to feed before the buffalo has expired. Now, Liss is wondering, will they eat before they go fetch the cubs? Well, one lioness has already beetled off back towards the cubs, so she might actually go fetch the cubs before feeding. So, difficult to say, it all depends on the situation. So, they were hungry, but they weren't too hungry. So they might she might go fetch the cubs before feeding. He's nearly, he's nearly gone. He's nearly gone to join the great buffalo herd in the sky. Now, 
Sheila said the lioness is trying to suffocate with a nose hold, but the buffalo is breathing through its mouth. Will she actually succeed in suffocating it um, with that nose hold? So Sheila, what she's actually doing is if she is on that nose hold, the, as she keeps biting in that little cavities back into that buffalo's lungs. So what's actually happening, she's, 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 she's not suffocating, she's not suffocating the buffalo, she's drowning it. So there we go, you can see the blood around her mouth and you can hear that buffalo breathing. So the more she bites into that nose, and the more blood that starts flowing down the nasal cavity back into the lungs is what's going to kill that buffalo. You can actually hear how it's breathing now. It's starting to almost gurgle. See those leg kicks are getting weaker and weaker. I don't think it's going to be too long now. No. Send it. She's just changing her grip. See how she's biting like that at the end? It's to get that bleeding going, to get more blood going down into those nostrils. Now that, coupled with the massive loss of blood this buffalo is suffering from its behind. And the two other lionesses have really opened up his rump. Actually, almost look like they're almost there we go, you can see that into his stomach cavity already. So that, yeah, there you go, his intestines are coming out already. So that massive trauma and, and loss of blood at the base, coupled with that, not suffocation, that drown grip of the lioness in the front. Um, you probably find this buffalo has been in shock for some time and, and I hope not feeling anything. So D is wondering why are the lionesses using that nose hold as opposed to the more traditional throat grip and the suffocation grip. Now with a big buffalo bull like this D, you'll probably find his larynx is too wide. So when lions grab something around the neck, there's a, a gap between their their teeth so between their so they've got their canines which act as an anchor and then their premolars and their molars now between those two there's a big gap and that gap is actually specially designed to pinch close uh, the larynx of animals now with the lioness you'll probably find that this these buffalo this big buffalo bull his larynx is too big for her to, to actually get that grip going. So she's unable to get or pinch the, the larynx closed. So that is why you'll often see lioness prefer the, the, nose, the nose hold on buffalo uh, as opposed to the throat hold, the more traditional what we see with lions and smaller prey. Now, 
and you can see her, her paw there below the mouth. It almost looks like she's holding its mouth closed, but it's not. She's just using that as an anchor. You can see the mouth still open. Yeah, and every now and then she gives a little shake or bite. It's, it's to, again to increase that blood flow into the lungs. I'm not sure what time this started. Do you know, Zanya? <laughs> no idea. The excitement took over. Um, but I missed that. How long did say? It's been 40 minutes since they started, jump, started jumping on this buffalo. Now, it's probably been a bit shorter because of the drought, but I have seen it's take nearly two hours to kill a big buffalo bull and that was with a bigger pride of lions in the Inkumas. But that buffalo was in prime condition. So these buffalo bulls, uh, I could only see bulls, I didn't see any other buffalo as they charged past us. And uh, these bulls are old, past prime, and this drought would have definitely had an effect on them. And it does make them an easier, easier target. But by no means an easy target. And here the breathing getting much shallower. And you can hear that. You can see she's, she's putting extra force and she's biting harder now. I don't think it's long now. You can see there's... Yeah. Breathing getting much, much shallower. Almost the leg kicks now are almost non existent. She's only going to let go when that buffalo finally expires. The leg kicks very, very weak now. Not quite. I don't think it's long to go now before this. It's the end of this poor big boy. You can see she almost senses it's close to the end. Now, as I said, it's an old buffalo bull. Wingnut's wondering how old. I guess probably between 12 and 14 years old. 
And so it passed his prime. And about 10, 11, they pushed out of the, the big breeding herds, and they live in these bachelor groups. And these Inkahumas have been specializing in these bachelor groups of buffalo this dry season. Now that is actually stomach content on her shoulder there that sprayed out of the intestines as they pulled them out. There we go, you can see that on her neck there. It's not blood, it's buffalo stomach content that sprayed out as the other lioness pulled out their intestines. There's a very good chance there'll be a male lion here by tomorrow. If there are any in the vicinity, they definitely would have heard that buffalo's distress calls. Meg's wondering, can another lioness take over the nose grip? It is possible, Meg, but unlikely in the situation where the buffalo is down. Yeah, now the breathing is getting very, very difficult. Starting to become sometimes some big gaps between the, the breaths. Hi, William in Oregon. William would like to know. Why do they always seem to start eating it from the rear end? Well, with buffalo, it's the safe end because they, they'll start feeding or actually opening up that area to try and weaken it during the hunt. And secondly, it's the nice, the rump, the nice tender, lots of meat there. So you'll find a lot of animals, and especially cats, will, will start eating at the rear end, at the rump, because it in case they lose it to another lion or hyenas or whatnot, they get the most amount of meat in the shortest part of time without having to chew through any bones. Now, is that other lion that's going in to help or is she just going to start feeding? Looks like the other lioness has come to expedite these proceedings. There you can see there's that stomach content oh, sorry, on that lioness's neck. Again, apologies to our sensitive viewers. It's 
nearly over. Even if she had to let go of that nose hold now, there's no way this poor boy would survive. She has not relinquished that grip on his nose since she got there. And she won't till he takes his last breath. Now that crunch, crunch you hear is that lioness at the tail cutting open the skin. See how she's sliced the skin open there. You can actually see. It's almost like someone's taken a pair of scissors and cut a perfectly straight line. Now her premolars, are which what she's using to cut open to get to the skin to get to the meat, are literally like a really sharp pair of side cutters. Now again, apologies to our sensitive viewers. This is live. This is raw. This is uncut. This is happening right now in the African bush. And if you are a little bit sensitive, just look away. It'll be over in about 10 or so minutes. The buffalo should be dead. And I know it is disturbing, but one must remember, this is the future for these lions. They've got eight little cubs to feed. So a big buffalo bull like this is a great catch for the evening. Stop breathing. No, he's still, he's still kicking. I can't be far now. Just trying to watch carefully to see when he starts stops breathing. Now sometimes you will have leg kicking after the animal is dead. It's just their nerves. The heart will still be pumping. See those look almost more like those nerve reactions, not coordinated. Yeah, I think he's expired. Let's have a look at his stomach, see if it still looks like it's breathing. Okay, 
Let's move a little bit higher up onto the, there we go, onto that part of the stomach. I just want to have a look. And he's, 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 he's almost stopped breathing, but he's still alive. He's gasping. There we go. She's let him go. It's done. There we go. Now she's going to lie down and have a well-earned rest before she even thinks about starting to feed. One, two lioness is resting. The third eating. I wonder where the fifth in Kahuma is. Well, the fourth one, I think, might have gone back to fetch the cubs. Now, all that sniffing around earlier might have been after these buffalo. So I wish, wouldn't it be nice if we could speak lion? What I find incredible with lions is the non-verbal communication. So how they read each other's body language. Oh, there comes the small intestine. So it's incredible that they're able to to, to sort of maneuver and flank, all depending on the movement and body language of the other animals. And I think that's probably one of the most fascinating things for me about lions, is, is that non-verbal, that non-vocal, so not verbal, they can't speak, but that non-vocal communication. So of course lions have their vocal communications, their roars, their contact calls, but in the hunt they can't because it'll give away their position. So once they get that buffalo open, uh, generally they'll try to get for the, the sort of high value items, heart, kidney, lung, livers, high in vitamins and minerals, particularly the liver, high iron content. But as you can see, they're not fussy. Those are the intestines and that is stomach content coming out as she pulls through. She obviously doesn't eat that sort of half digested grass, what she's really after there is that the actual lining of the intestine. Now she doesn't want to eat, but now just because there's another line there, they will growl at you. I think she's going to lie down for a bit more. Well, she might head back, if there's one of the mothers, she might head off to go fetch cubs. Or she might head off down towards Buffalo's Hook for a drink. There you go, she's walking straight towards Jamie. Now she's changing her direction. And she might, maybe she's heading back towards the cubs, who knows? I know you guys can still see that lioness with Jamie. I can't see her at all now. So 
So here we go. We're with the two remaining lionesses. I wonder if she's going to go fetch those cubs. I think she's going to go for a drink at Buffalo's Hook first. Now, the fact that there's almost zero fighting around this carcass means that these lions have been incredibly well fed over the last while. And that is, the drought has definitely been aiding them. So normally in a situation like this, if these lions had been desperately hungry, there would be much growling, snarling and beating of each other uh, at, as they took down the buffalo and started feeding. Well, it seems like everyone's off. I'm sure one lioness will stay. The next one's off down the road. I can't see it. That is another one of the mothers that's moved away. There she goes. So they have four lionesses, maybe it's only amber eyes left behind. And the three mothers have gone off to fetch the cubs. Let's have a look at one. Yeah, that doesn't look like a lactating lioness. So that means the missing lioness is the youngest female. Maybe she's off entertaining a Birmingham boy. The last time, well, not the last time, the time before last year when we saw the Incahumas uh, grab a buffalo, it was Amber Eyes who was on the nose. This time it wasn't, so there we go, that also answers that question. It's not always the same line in the same spot. It'll be incredibly un unlikely that there won't be a male lion tomorrow. I think it's very likely there will be a male. Now, those big boys, they hear that buffalo go boo, and they come a-jogging. So it took probably just under 50, or just under an hour for this buffalo to die, which is about normal 40 minutes to an hour. Now I'm sure a few of you are wondering where the hyenas are. Now at the moment, our hyena clan has moved a bit further to the northwest. So we're not seeing them too much, but for hyenas to steal this kill from lions, you can work on an average of three hyenas to one lion. So there would have to be, if all five lionesses were present, there would have to be 15 hyenas for them to sort of mob the, the, the Inkahuma pride off this carcass. Now if you add a male into the equation, the hyenas will stay away. It's very, very seldom and that there are hyenas brave enough to take on a male lion. He's just that much stronger and that much more powerful than the females. What a first drive back. 